Okay, let's take a look at the derivation for Kepler's third law of planetary motion. It's pretty interesting and it's not all that hard. Kepler's third law deals with two masses, we'll call them big M and little m, and the small one is orbiting the large one. So this could be a satellite orbiting the Earth, or maybe the Moon orbiting the Earth, or in the situation Kepler was considering, this is a planet orbiting the Sun. And we are considering the case of a circular orbit, so the physics of circular motion will apply, and these are the variables we'll need to consider. The two masses, of course, big M and little m, and the radius of the orbit, which goes from the center of one mass to the center of the other, and we'll call that r. We'll also need to think about the speed. We'll call that v. That's the speed with which this mass is orbiting, and we'll need to think about the time for one orbit. We usually use capital T for time, and we call the time for one orbit the period of the orbit. Now, in the case of a circular orbit, we understand the basic physics of circular motion. This object would move in a straight line path based on its own inertia if something weren't pulling it inward away from that straight line path. And in this case, that inward centripetal force, what we call F sub C, is the force of gravity. And we have an equation or an expression for the centripetal force and also an expression for the force of gravity. The centripetal force is mv squared over r and the m here is the mass that's moving in a circle and the v is the velocity with which it's moving and the r is the radius of the circle. And that's equal to the force of gravity which is capital G, the universal gravitational constant, times the product of the masses which is big M times little m divided by the square of the distance between them. And the distance here is the distance between their centers. That's r squared. And that r is the same r as the radius of this circle. And then algebraically you see what happens. The m's here, the little m, will cancel on each side. And the r on the left will cancel one of the r's on the right. So we're left with v squared is equal to G times capital M over R. And that's an equation that we've seen before, although now we are going to replace V with a different expression. V is velocity, and velocity, you know, is distance over time. So let's think about this object moving and think about the distance and the time. Well, we know it goes a distance of one lap when the time is one period. That's basically the definition of the period, the time for one lap. So one lap is just the circumference of this circle, which would be 2 pi r. So if we want to call velocity distance over time, we can say it's 2 pi r divided by t. So on the left, let's write that. Let's write 2 pi r divided by t, and it's velocity squared, so we need to square this. The right side is still gm over r. Now let's square everything in the parentheses. The 2 squared will be a 4, and all the other variables will be squared. So we'll have 4 pi squared r squared over t squared is equal to gm over r. And now I just want to solve this. I want to rearrange this algebraically to solve it for t squared. So I'll go ahead and show you the steps on that. I'm going to multiply both sides by t squared. And I'm going to multiply both sides by r. And I'm going to divide both sides by gm. And everything will cancel out on the right, except for the t squared. The g's cancel, the m's cancel, the r's cancel. Over on the left, the t squareds have canceled, and I'm, I'm left with 4 pi squared r cubed over gm. So let's write that, and I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to put the t squared on the left. So t squared is equal to all of this, and we see the 4 pi squared over gm times r cubed. Now look at this, 4 of course is a constant, 
pi is a constant, so pi squared is a constant. Big G is the universal gravitational constant, and M, the mass that's being orbited, is a constant. So all of this, 4 pi squared over GM, is a constant, which means T squared is equal to some constant times R cubed. And that's the same thing as saying that T squared is proportional to R cubed.